he's just a hack. He's just an absolute hack. And he gets his ass kicked by his teammates every week. It's just, you know, it's terrible. It's just terrible. Welcome back to another episode of the Believe in FCS Football Podcast. I'm Joe DeLeo and here with Sean Anderson. Sean, it is only May. It's it's almost June. It's going to be June in a few days. And our listeners have managed to already be in full season form. I had a, a simple tweet that wasn't even my tweet, but something that we were tagged in that Jamie posted resulted in the most aggressive back and notification forth. Notification after notification after I didn't no, read Mon- any of I'll, them. I'll say this. Montana fans, uh, uber sensitive. Uber sensitive are, are Montana fans. I don't call out a whole fan base, please. I will. We're not doing that. Again. We're not doing that again. Montana fans, as of this week, as of this current show, <laughs> hacks, <laughs> hacks. They're the hack of the week. Is that who we're claiming? Hack, hack of, of the week? week, Montana fans, because I, I got no silence on my phone because of just it was childish. So the the back and forth we're referring to, it was really random. It was about the quarterback show that we did. And there was this back and forth between Kyler and, and and Thorny and the Fight on Montana podcast, just about if there was film of Tommy. Wait, I got the correct pronunciation set to Malat. 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 Yeah. Tommy Malat, if there was film on him against Montana. And it was like just like the weirdest inter. I didn't bother reading any of it because it was it was the most semantic based question that we could possibly get in freaking May. Guys, I love the energy. I love the energy, but like, can we <laughs> can we relax? A game hasn't been played yet, here, fellas. <laughs> like, like, golly, uh, blowing golly. me up, blowing me up all day. Which again is inherently a good thing, but we are not. Like Pat McAfee doesn't have to deal with that. He doesn't have to read all the tweets because when he sends something out, obviously he's going to get responses. Mm-hmm. We have to read it all. We are combing through it. We have one phone apiece. We don't have two phones to be able to filter all that nonsense out. Nor do we have an intern to, to pinpoint things. But regardless, today's episode, in the spirit of yelling on Twitter, uh, we have a special episode of Jamie's Corner. Oh, Got yeah. a lot of fun questions this week. Uh, no questions from Brendan or um, Thumper. Yeah, or no, wait, Brendan is Thumper. I swear to God. Um, oh, boy. Or Chad. <laughs> It's been a long day. Yeah. Uh, I've been up since five. You were, you were out golfing. You had an easy day. Uh, Sean, before we get to the questions. Yeah, okay. We, we can do talk the read. about how easy my day was. We can talk about me having to publish a video on the course on hole 12. How about that? Is that easy? From my phone to a Facebook uh, page with, easy. With, with a bar and a half, maybe. You want to hear about a read? I'll give you a read. I can't bet sports, but that doesn't mean I don't. It doesn't mean I don't. You know what I'm going to do for the rest of my life? I'm going to bet Orioles overs. That's what I'm going to do. Because in the eighth inning and the ninth inning and the seventh inning, all they want to do is score runs. <laughs> Innings one through six, <laughs> why even go up to the plane? <laughs> Regardless, our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all of your betting needs and sports information. Find all of the latest sports developments, including updated odds on, on the NBA and NHL playoffs, Major League Baseball fights, and even not Major League Baseball fights and yeah, even next season's nfl futures <laughs> i don't know why fights wasn't capitalized <laughs> we've been getting a lot of we've been getting a lot of fights lately <laughs> um battle line is your continued source for all of your sports wagering needs including live betting and your fav- favorite vegas casino and poker games it's super easy to get started so head to the website today or use your mobile device to join and use our promo code believe to receive your 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit battle line where the game starts Thank you, Sean. Sean, I I was the on the Yankees like, and the and the Orioles have played like twenty times in the last oh man uh, two weeks, and all I've been doing is getting boned. Been getting those, getting all those wrong. I I decided so I went on such a cold streak. I only had ten dollars left in my bet online account. Oh my god, so, I die for ten dollars. So I mean, like any rational sports better, you know what I did? I did huh. a, a twelve team parlay, a ten dollars oh, to win fourteen thousand. I was. I was making good pace. I got a lot of them right. And then the, the first game was the one that I got wrong, which was uh, a 1-1 tie going into the ninth inning between the Rockies and the Pirates. 
and I picked the Rockies, the the the, the Pirates won by one. You know what? Back. I'm not going to fault you. The Pirates suck eggs, and if, if we have any Pittsburgh <laughs> listeners, you can go screw too because <laughs> the Pirates cover when they don't need to cover. Why are you so mad today? You're just at every fan base. Because baseball frustrates me. Okay. Because I know baseball. I know all the players and all the managers and everybody. Get it, did, but did bad you, teams cover when they're not supposed to. Did you take your shirt off, or are you wearing like only a like a only a jacket? Switcher? Yeah, okay. Because I thought you were wearing I a college shirt a second no, ago. No, 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 no. I was wearing a college shirt from golf. Total collapse on the back nine, by the way. Mm. Um, and then uh, you put a full. You had, had time for a full eighteen. Twilight hours. We were playing fast. Jeez, I I I, don't, I would. That's that's a lot of time. It it, it wasn't. It was like three hours. Okay. Well, you, do got... you want to know my schedule for the week? <laughs> no, wanna... I don't. This I don't. was my one <laughs> off evening. This was it. You want to get? You want? You want to know what Sean's doing Thursday through Sunday? Working. So, pardon me for getting some golf in. Well, yeah, you need to work. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not trying to trigger you. I'm not trying to. I'm sure. Trying to. Because I'm not triggered uh, enough already. What? Right. We we've got. <laughs> We've got time now to answer some questions from our listeners, and then we're going to do the running back ranking show, which is going to be the next one early on next week. Uh, first question that we have from Nick Masseroni, the voice of the Believe in FCS football podcast. Uh, you heard his beautiful voice in the audio intro. He asks, are you guys seeing any FCS guys getting NIL deals outside of the HBCUs? So the deal with this is yes, there are the sporadic ones that you're getting with these small brands that are offering up affiliate codes and things like that. You see it all over the place. The, the URI yeah. guys, we, you know, we, every other guy on the team had an affiliate code, uh, you know, especially the guys that had relatively decent sized social followings. But this was actually really good timing to talk about something that came up in the news this past week, Sean. I don't, I don't know if you saw this, but there was news that, UT Martin quarterback Dresser Wynn signed an NIL deal for the support of the candidacy of Colin Johnson, not the JMU quarterback, Colin Johnson, a Colin That's Johnson who is running Cole Johnson, huge Shit. doof, who is running for district attorney general for <laughs> yeah. Tennessee's 27th judicial district. So apparently there was already a relationship between them in place. His agents, which I didn't think Dresser was that big of a prospect that he'd have multiple yeah. marketing agents, but here he is signing a deal with a politician. I, I, I'm curious to get your thoughts, Sean. I don't like this. This is really weird, and it's probably one of the few times we'll get this to happen, but it's really freaking weird. I would stay away from the politicians, stay away from the politics in general. That's typically what we do on this show, um, and we, we we go the extra mile to stay away from all that. Um it's odd for the original question. I mean, we saw plenty of Rhode Island guys that we knew and we followed uh, pick up deals from a wing joint or an energy drink company, whatever it is. So your local team probably has players, uh, primarily the starters that are getting deals. Um, but it's nothing like like what this is happening uh, with, uh, with, <laughs> with, with, with signing on with a politician. Uh, but it's also not like uh massive mega million deals. So, and I, uh, athletes, they're be, they're able to, uh, to, 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 to sign some stuff. I mean, my sister found it, found an NIL deal from, from a company here in Virginia that trains baseball athletes. Uh, so she's able to work that and she tags them. She does all that stuff. So I, mean, it, it, the college athletes are finding a way. Right. It, I, I just was, was very perplexed by this and, and dresser was the, Starting quarterback, I believe, this past year, or he he took some took some snaps. Doesn't look like he threw that many, threw all that many passes uh, this past season. But I I just I'm not a fan of this. I I would like this is something that I would like for rules to be in place for nil. I, I I'm just I you don't get this at the professional level really. You don't get guys signing endorsements to. No support candidates at Where all. Would this ever happen at? This you seems like a never. Parody. It's like a, a, a right. It's it, like in it, the middle of the. the it's like know, an SNL those, episode. Uh, it's an Onion article. It's it reads yeah. like an Onion article, and you're just like, what? And you know, of course, like out kicks like running laps with with something like this because I'm sure he's a Republican candidate. But I mean, I, again, I just I I don't care either side where, where he's he's a representative of. 
I just don't think that this is – I'm not really a fan of this. I would prefer to keep this stuff out of it. I, I don't think this is entirely necessary. It doesn't seem like a well-advised decision. Mm -hmm. um, so someone needs to be in this corner saying, all right, mm -hmm. don't do this. You know, go to a, a fried chicken place. Go go to a you know, <laughs> go to somewhere else. You know, I I would have loved to have been be a normal. By yeah, be a normal twenty two year old quarterback that gets a, a deal where they give you chicken wings on the weekends oh. and they throw you a couple like five hundred dollars for every post that you make. Be a That'd normal be twenty two year old that just wants some. I, I just I don't I I hate it. I hate it. Not this. I hate it. Uh, Sean. Next question we have from friend of the show and my annoying co host Ryan Roberts. Uh, shout out to Ryan who notified me that I left the gap in of the quarterback show where my internet disconnected. So that was a fun little thing. Oh, that was did you there. really remember yes. when you came back and said, Oh, you don't need to talk because I'm going to cut it all out. So that yeah. was left in, huh? Uh, not for long, but it was left in for a very brief period of time, but he's well, asking at least someone's air checking us. He, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> he asked who are the top five breakout quarterbacks? And I said that we answered that on the quarterback show, which we put out the following day after he asked the question. The follow-up question was top five Cole Kelly wannabes. Do you have there are one? none. There's not <laughs> one out there. There's not one. You can't replicate that. Dude. <laughs> I hope he takes a starting job in Washington. There's not one. You want to find a guy like that? You can't find him. Wait, is that where he signed? Yeah. Oh, I love that. Okay. Well, okay. that's the only answer we're getting. I don't <laughs> yeah, know any other. There are none. I don't know any other six foot seven dudes. I, I was going to do some searching and I was like, you know what? No, we're not doing this. We're <laughs> yeah. You know what you could search? How about a, um, like the 50th ranked, uh, NCAA basketball teams, power forward. That's probably your next Cole Kelly. That's probably <laughs> who it is. All right. Other than that, if he's uh, playing football, we would have known about him. Yeah, a Wichita exactly. State six foot nine exactly. power forward. Like a, a seat in the hall back up <laughs> off the bench. That's who you're looking at. Oh, God, I love it. Uh, next question that we have from Edwin Gommers. Um, first time asking a question for the FCS show. He asks a lot of NFL draft questions. So, actually, this is even further down the timeline, Sean. He used to send in questions for the Big Blue View show I used to do before oh. he hopped on these shows. So, I appreciate Edwin coming back to ask us questions here. He has an interesting one, and we actually spent like a good amount of time beforehand racking our brains on this one because it is a hard question to answer. He asked, which FBS quarterback would you like to see transfer to which FCS program? So I, I kind of went down this path of looking at quarterback recruits in the 2021 class, guys that would make sense to transfer down because we've had four-star guys transfer down and have success, three-star guys transfer down and have success. But I thought of it in a different sense, and I immediately went to the thought of Reese Udinsky, who we're going to talk about in a second for another question, who transferred from VMI to Maryland back to Richmond. So we went FCS, FBS, FCS. And I thought of Spencer Brown. And I think that if Spencer Brown, the former St. Francis quarterback who transferred from St. Francis to South Carolina, got to play some games, but got completely screwed over because they decided they wanted to go in and bring in um, Spencer Rattler. He transfers to Virg Virginia Tech, and he's now in a competition. I think if Spencer Brown doesn't win that job... I believe you're referring to Jason Brown. Jason Brown. Oh, no. You want to take a lap, buddy? Oh. Yeah, Jason Brown was a St. Francis quarterback. And then he transferred to the University of uh, South Carolina. Spencer Brown was an offensive lineman. This is, this is why you waited that long football. to correct me. I wrote it in the dark. <laughs> Don't yell at me. Uh, this is why we record earlier. In keep, the day. keep wearing that same FAMU football shirt. I, I, You've worn it for the last three shows. That's not true. <laughs> it is. That's not true. It is. Did you go check? I know it because the last three times I've seen you've been wearing that FAMU shirt. I, I, now that I have a, a, a washing machine in my apartment, I've been recycling through the same clothes. So I will admit that. Jason Brown. Jason, yeah, Brown, Jason Brown. The St. Francis quarterback. Holy yeah, crap. I'll fix it for you here in the dock. Just see. Thanks. That happened again. I think that Jason Brown has a really good shot to win the Virginia Tech job. But if he doesn't win that starting job, I see a circumstance where he could transfer down. I don't know what his eligibility is like. He's been around for a long time, and he transferred up, I think, as like a redshirt sophomore, a redshirt freshman. 
Um, but if he's got any more remaining eligibility, I think that he needs to take that chance. I think that was uh, that'll be fine. I mean, Spencer Brown would be tough for him to transfer from Buffalo to like a uh, shut the hell up. Different shut, the hell, shut the hell up. The amount of mistakes you have made on this show. And then I to- caught it late. I'm sorry. I caught it late, but at least I caught it, huh? Hmm. And I usually catch you before you make the mistakes. I'm yeah. usually the diligent one with the notes. You're the diligent one. <laughs> Next question. God okay. damn. Yeah. <laughs> now we have a we've got a oh, we've got a stupid a one. <laughs> yeah, why not? We've got a we've got a stupid one. Kyler oh, yeah. Neal decides to ask, why is the CAA just a glorified Patriot League? And why would Holy Cross steamroll Rhode Island 95% of the time? Bad so, time to ask this question. I, I right now I'm pissed off. Yeah. So we play in the CIA the CAA. It is not a glorified Patriot League because yeah, you match up the, most the CIA of the CIA is teams. tough. You know, you gotta go through training <laughs> and you gotta get all the clearances. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> the CAA. Ah. The worst team in the CAA in any season, the Colonial except Athletics for the top team, the top team, <laughs> besides the top team in the Patriot League, the worst team in the CAA is going to dominate any of the teams in the Patriot League. I don't sure. think that's a hot take. The, the Patriot League usually only puts out one to two competitive teams, and that one team is just barely good enough to be competitive. Yeah, they're like the, the FBI. They're just not. They're not cut out of the same cloth as us. I'm going to end this episode. <laughs> I'm going to end this episode. Answer the question candidly. God. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, the Patriot League stinks, um, especially compared to the CAA, which continually puts out NFL prospects and NFL players and constantly having scouts at every single practice for all of the teams. It's FBS recruits. All of it. Yeah. Uh, the Patriot League. I, I think Kyler was just trying to stir you up a little bit. Yeah. Why um, is the Patriot League just a glory? Actually, why is the Patriot League a dumbed down version of the Ivy League? Quite literally, athletically oh, and also mentally. Oh, damn. Okay. The schools are just a slightly worse version of the Ivy League schools and the athletes are also slightly worse. Tell me. how. Tell them how you really feel. All right. Let's get to Joshua's question. I'm really intrigued. Oh, we, we're, this we're, we're skipping the. Yeah, we'll skip the, the 95. The, the, oh, yeah, the, that wouldn't happen. Rhode Island would beat Holy Cross. We have Holy Cross's offensive coordinator. I, I, I don't, that's like there's yeah, no remaining part of that silly. argument. Stupid question. Yeah. Dumb. We love you, Kyler, though. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> he, that, that might be the hack question of the week. Uh, Joshua Hoffman. Is. Why doesn't uh, I've never got a question from this guy? This is the the most insane question. This is his first shot at it, huh? Why does an egg roll, a egg roll, which is supposed to be an egg roll, yeah. the size of a uh, God? No one knows how to type questions. You told me you'd you'd, you'd spe- uh, speak it as it was typed. Yes. Why does a egg roll roll? Why does a egg roll the size of Chipotle burrito sound awesome? Ah, uh, that'd be great. That sounds disgusting. I don't. I would about. Oh, that'd be great. But here's my problem just a with big it. fucking fat egg roll. Just you get holding your hand and just mow down on it. I'd rather eat a bunch of small egg rolls than a massive one because, like, it, it's like it would be like a burrito. The minute you bit into it, it would just start crumbling. Like, no, I, no, I, I think I think an egg roll has more continuity within itself than a a, a burrito. All the rice and the that's, beans and the cheese and the point. lettuce and that's the salsa and the, the loose chicken. Egg rolls are wound tight, brother. Egg rolls they're, are a tightly wound. Oh, because they're food. fried. They're fried. Fine. But that's the other thing, too, is that like, that fried casing. Imagine eating that the size of a Chipotle burrito. I'm that imagining would, it. Could you imagine the bowel movement that that would nah, create? You're gross. You're but gross. I'm serious. That's where your mind immediately goes. I'm. It would hurt. <laughs> oh, my God. You are you're a weak, weak. The entertainment what, what was the, what was the sour, sour candy I gave you that made you almost cry? I give you, you, you a warbreaker. You give me I'll a jawbreaker. I give you a warhead, and it almost made you break down. You are a weak man. God, I don't send in. If I'm you're sorry sending in you a eat... food question, direct it to me because I'm I have a palate eat... and I can handle it. I'm sorry that you eat food. Your your meals are the size of that massive of an egg roll and have the calorie density right they are. usually. So you're used to that, but I'm not. So hey, I'm not Johnny gonna... Four Patty, how how's it how's it going over on your end? I've never done that. Uh, next question that we have from oh, NCAA Football oh, Nation. Okay, yeah, let's get to the next question, huh? 
Those were those, those were back when I was like 220. Um, suck. NCAA Football Nation asks, five most impactful FBS to FCS quarterback transfers in 2022. Uh, this is a great account, by the way. They uh, they followed me recently. They've got a pretty sizable following, so I appreciated ah, gotcha. them chiming in. Um, I picked a, a, a handful of them here. So, Reese Dinsky to Richmond was one that, that immediately pops off. Aaron McLaughlin, quarterback from NC State, who I believe was a four-star recruit, transferred to Jacksonville State, which that only means so much because they're moving up eventually. Um, Jaron Williams, the quarterback from USF, transferring to Alabama A&M, getting a replacement for Aquil Glass. That's that's huge for them. Uh, Cornelius Brown, the third Georgia State quarterback, who got a lot of touches and, and reps. What's the fourth? UT Martin, fourth. I see is the fourth. What did I say? The fifth? Third. Third. I'm not reading. Uh, Tyler Johnston, the UAB yeah, quarterback uh, to Towson. Also, um, he had a 300-yard passing game, first game of the season, and then got beat out. So, like, he's somebody to pay attention to. But the one I want to talk about, though, Sean, because I know you don't know any of those names. and They don't ring a bell to you at all. Uh, Kalen Newton, though. I had no idea he transferred to to William & Mary. I don't know if he's playing You know why you wouldn't? Because it's irrelevant. We've been talking about Kalen Newton for two years, three years. But, but we would have heard well, more by now, Joe. You think that Kalen Newton's irrelevant? He was really good at Howard. It was a dumb decision on his part to transfer to Auburn. He wasn't going to get onto the field. They did Bo Nix. Tired of hearing about Kalen Newton personally. I'm tired of hearing about it. I hope I hope he thrives for William Mary. I hope he can take William Mary and turn them into a strong playoff team for the CAA. I hope he can do that. But what have I seen? I I, I, I I respect him being on the list. Uh, uh, fantastic athlete from a great athletic family. I, I'm not in. I'm not in on him. The rest of the list that you have compiled, that you have compiled, I can be in on. You have provided rationale. You can do that. Not in on Kalen Newton personally. The rabbit hole, next question. Uh, the first one he asked was stupid, and I was really disappointed because the rabbit hole has been on fire with these questions. And he asked how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood, which like. Yeah, that's hack. That's, that's really hack. Uh, the next question that he did ask, he said, fine, when I told him we need a better one. He said, list your top 10 rappers of the 2000s decade. Provide explanations. 10 is too much. So let's give me five, Sean. I, I, I don't 10. even necessarily have. I don't have a top I have 10. Question. All right, you go through it and give us 10. I'll run down my 10 right now for okay. the rabbit hole. Lil Wayne, self-explanatory. And I'm assuming this is 2000 to 2010. This is so, in no particular order, right? No particular order. Okay. Um, Lil Wayne, self-explanatory. Eminem, mm -hmm. self-explanatory. Self Kanye yeah. West, self-explanatory. Yes. Jay-Z, self-explanatory. Yes. Outcast, their best stuff was in the 90s, but they still put out really, really good stuff with Stankonia, which I believe was in 2001. And Speaker Box slash The Love Below, which was, I believe, in 2003, 2004. That's where we got Hey Out from. Uh, so they're on the list. And, and people are trying to divide uh, uh, Andre 3000 himself and Big Boy through this because Big Boy put out more individual stuff in the 2000s. doesn't matter. Those two albums together uh, count for the 2000s. Outcast is in it. Uh, six, 50 Cent, self-explanatory. Seven, Ludacris. Put out some really big club bangers uh, during mm. the 2000s. A lot that's of stuff a, that's a sleeper still, pick right there. The that's Ludicrous still being th that is being played in all college weight rooms uh, today, especially yes. if they have a 40 plus year old um, strength <laughs> coach. Uh, eight Young Jeezy, same as Ludacris. A lot of club bangers. Nine MF Doom, love MF Doom. A uh, bit of a, a little more of a sleeper pick than Ludacris because Ludacris was massive in the 2000s. Uh, but MF Doom, uh, I like everything about him. And then 10, a split decision, T.I. slash T-Pain. T-Pain, more of actually in the club music. T.I., more features. I mean, you got Rubber Band Man. You got all the all the great uh, post-Outcast Atlanta bangers from T.I. Because that's when he really came on the scene and took the torch from Outcast to kind of carry on Atlanta. You can say Luda had some part, part in that also. Uh, but um, T.I., T-Pain coming in at 10 slash 10 slash 11 for me. Sean, I, I don't have any qualms with that list necessarily, but the one I'm surprised you didn't include, how, how, no DMX? <sighs> like, I, I, I listened to, to, to rap and a lot of those artists in the early two, 2000s to 2010s and all that stuff. That's why I don't disagree, but like the one that I thought would be on there over some of those other guys that you had at the end, I would have thought the DMX would have been on there. Well, the hood out came out in two, 2003. I looked it up. I got you. DMX didn't make it for me. And um, 
it is what it is, but he didn't make it. I'm sorry. I, I, I mean, I know we listen to a lot of DMX, but if I'm looking, maybe he could have subbed in for MF Doom, but I already had my club bangers. Actually, DMX is might have been bigger than Jeezy's. No, no, yeah. I'm sticking with Jeezy. I'm okay. sticking with Jeezy. I'm sticking with my list. I, that's my list. Personally, I'd probably put DMX in over Ludacris, uh, but if I'm talking about the top 10, top 10, that's the top 10 that I had for you. So the the second it was it was a two parter that we got from the rabbit hole, and I just want to really quickly pull up the image that he wants us. Sure, I have a guess. Okay, let me let me just let me just pull this up really quick. I had it pulled up, up, and then oh yeah, he had to go out and come back in. Nine forty two, okay. my time. You don't need to sleep. I'd love to sleep. Okay, All right. you're pulling it up. So this is the picture that he sent to us. Sure. And he says, uh, where do you think this photo was taken? Reno. I don't know if they have those. Tri- this is somewhere in Florida. I'm going to guess. Reno. Why? I'm betting Reno. The trees say Florida. The no, skyline no, no, no. says Florida. Florida trees all right, here's what you have about Florida, all right? And I learned this a couple of years ago. Florida is technically within the contiguous United States, and I think if you include Hawaii and Alaska also, Florida is the flattest state in um, in the United States. No mountains, no hills, all that stuff. So you have a point because you can't really see any mountains and stuff like that, open sky. But I think those trees are going too high, especially that second tree that we're looking at. I think that's too high for, uh... for a Florida tree. Those, those palm leaves are going up a little high for me. I'm saying Reno because... Standard Los Angeles would be too easy. I'm sticking with Florida. All right, stick with Florida. All right, so we need... Do we have an answer? Uh, no, he's going to tell is us. That just guesses. He's going to tell. Yeah, we're just guessing here. He's going to oh, tell God. us tomorrow. All right, All right. Wait. let's let's rip through these. We've got a few more. Um, I'm skipping the FCS Fan Nation question. Uh, Jamie Williams, first one. Is it pork roll or ta- Taylor Ham? It's Taylor Ham. Uh, pork roll. You're just saying that to antagonize me. What are your favorite and least Sorry. favorite road what, venues I must to play? Have the least favorite one. Harvard. Harvard, without a doubt. The dumpiest, over, most overrated stadium that I have little, ever played in. Little junior trailer um, that you would see yeah. at an elementary <sighs> school with overfill. Like, that's what you would see for your dressing room, your locker room. Mm-hmm. Um, they try to make you go through a, a little rabbit's, uh, rabbit hole, uh, a, a mouse hole, a mouse door, basically. Um, and thank God we got Donnie Smith, who was able to get us through the actual gates. Harvard, and not even because the fans. I mean, the fans we could talk there, about. There were no fans there. Virginia obviously. Tech fans were really, really rude. Uh, but the, crashed, I will, especially I was when our guys say, got injured. Uh, JMU with the streamers. Yeah, uh, but they I was going to say hearing, the, they love hearing that they jam you guys. Uh, J, I, I was most angry, and I'll let you get to yours. Most yeah, angry with the Virginia Tech guys. Um. The Harvard Stadium hated the most, but the the trip that I enjoyed the most was the Virginia Tech trip because the locker room was an actual good oh, locker gorgeous. room. Oh, gorgeous. Great massive locker room. Lo- massive locker room. And then on top of that, all the food and the arrangements that we got on the trip was fantastic. No, no. Football, the, fo- the, the, the football operations at Virginia Tech yeah. was handled as good, if not better, than anything we had ever had. The fans at Virginia Tech, I was it was the closest that I had ever come to actually wanting to get in the stands and 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 – Mm-hmm. I really get it mixed up with people and you know me, I'm not, it's like I was out there in the, in the starting five, but they were, I mean, just like when, when our guys were getting hurt, they were just yelling foul things. I'm like, all right, all right, you keep it up. You keep it up. And I, I so uh, Virginia tech is always going to have a little bit of, um, I'm always gonna be a little more biased against them. Uh, next question that we have, how, or why does Joe hate Holy cross so much? Why I, wouldn't he? There was no bias with Holy Cross. The problem was is that the first year we did the show, I was tweeting about how Monmouth was going to stomp him in the first round. Yeah, and out I think of it was the one Cross. guy. No, it was like it was more five. than one. Was it? It oh, was a. Five. It was a. But no, it was a. You're being it dramatic. A, it was a handful of people that that came out of the woodworks that never listened to the show and started berating me because I was saying that they were going to get stomped out. And five, I, I took I'll a victory you, lap. I'll give you they won. three. I'll give you a three. It I'm was not at least you four. Five. It was at least oh, four. Oh, you that's, can't like you can't settle with me a three. That's the story of why I I I have disdain towards Holy Cross. Yeah. Um, all right, now hack questions of the week from Colin to wrap us up. What FCS games will you be attending this year, Colin? We're not telling you. 
We're not, we're not, we don't decide either. We yeah. are going to, we're going to put the polling out the first or second week of August. That was, that is when everyone can, can help us decide. That's it. Deal. Yes. We've explained that multiple times. Uh, what's been going on at Portland state. I assume a lot a of shit. rain. Um, I don't have to read this. Pause. Pan Rams, ah, pans, and is, is what I, I don't know why I entertained that. Why <laughs> you are Joe Burgundy. You will read what is put on. You read. I that promised last word. it. I promised. You read I promise, that last I, word. Uh, is it with snoo? Is it with, is it with, is it with snooshow? There you go. There we go. What, it's... You're Joe Burgundy. You read what the people write. Colin, can you translate that sentence for us? Oh, Colin's the worst. <laughs> That's why he has his own little corner. <laughs> Colin's what's Colin's corner? The hat questions of the week. <laughs> so Colin's Colin is officially hat questions of the week with Colin. Yeah, every, every questions that he asks are uh, automatically or I also didn't see. I, 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 may, week. Maybe it was me. I didn't see enough comments on YouTube for Colin to be acting this way. Uh ah. We got a decent. He's been doing like five. I want twenty. I, I would need, like twenty. Colin gets carte blanche because he normally comments fifteen to twenty, and that's what we need. Uh, but if he's commenting five, what are we gonna do for him? We can't have that. Colin, I want sixty. Oh, 60 would be great. I want sixty That'd on this great. next episode. I want my phone to be blowing up with notifications. I love sixty that. comments. I love that. I hope you get blocked from YouTube for commenting so many times. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Sean wants to go to bed. Um, folks, thanks what for tuning about? in. I'm getting active. I'm making some goddamn nachos. I got some uh, chicken patties on the way. Yeah, it's going to be a good night for me. Okay. At Joe DeLeon at Sanderson Radio, Hack City. Hit subscribe. Everybody, drive safe.